Well, it is amazing how unremarkable this car is. It is. Because when it came out in the day, oh, it's got the cop engine, it's got the cop thing, you know, it's a high performance, but it's really not just a two barrel Mustang. But yeah. back when these cars came out, speedometers in regular cars because of emissions limits, the speedometer only up to 85 miles an hour. Well, it kind of feels a little fast, but not really. For its day, it yeah. was definitely its day. Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Today, something, well, completely different. Uh, not so different, but a little bit different. This is a 1982 Ford Mustang police car. Now, if you've never heard of that, it was sort of a revolutionary idea back in the early 80s. You know, they were driving those Crown Vicks, and there were a lot of young comedians driving fast cars, and the cops couldn't catch them with those Crown Vicks, you know, or 318 Judge. They were just slow. Some of you had six cylinders. And the highway patrol figured, we got to figure out some way to catch these guys. And they came up with this, the Ford Mustang. It's got a four-speed manual transmission, V8, uh, two-barrel carbs, which make it a little easier for us to get away. But uh, interesting, it's an interesting uh, package. And it, there was a lot of publicity. All of a sudden, it was really cool to be in the highway patrol because you got to drive this Mustang with a stick. and. I don't know how you got guys <laughs> in that back seat. We've got a retired officer here who'll tell us uh, how he did it. But uh, he, he, he was, on, I guess, on the pilot program of this. Uh, Rich Sapakowski, am I saying that right? Yes. Come on in, Rich. How are you? Nice to see you, my friend. Nice. Thank you. Okay. Now, you were an officer for 30 years, huh? For 30 years. Oh, okay. And you, you were in on this. So you were, you were just about starting your career when this started, right? These came in 82, and I started in 85. Oh, okay. Okay. So, and you got to do some pursuits in these? Yes. How were they, were they fast? Uh, most of them were. Yeah. Uh, some were, were slower, people just didn't want to stop, but the majority were fast. Right. When the, the faster cars as well as the motorcycles. But were, were people surprised to see a Mustang? Yes, very. Yeah. Because you, you don't have the light bar on the roof. Right. Or any of that, so it like, made it a little easier to sneak up? It, it was a constant complaint. We weren't playing fair, we weren't trapping people. Right. Well, if they were speeding, they were speeding, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah so, now, did, did you go to court on those? Did you have to go to court on those? When it's yeah, we did. We did. Uh, as time went on, more people got used to it, but in their first inception. So how many of these did they have in the program, do you know? No, I don't. I know they had them from 1982 they started, and I think the last one was 1993. Yeah, because there was a whole campaign, a Ford that chases Porsches for a living. That right. was the idea. So that, that made it sort of cool. Right. And uh, so was it cool among the officers? Did you guys fight to get the Mustang? Oh, yeah. Because it, I would think fight. maybe some guys might not like it because it's smaller than a full-size car. Well, there was guys that didn't like them. Yeah. But then there was guys that, that died for them. Yeah. My first two years was out on Bakersfield, and a lot of that was working I-5, right. which when you have 30-plus miles between exits, it's a lot of open road. And even the old timers, they fought to have Mustangs because that's the only way you could catch anybody. Right. Now, did they have air conditioning? Yeah. Okay. Well, that was fairly new, wasn't it? Because, well, no, I guess by the no, 80s. The, the diplomats and whatnot had them. Yeah, yeah. Because remember in the 70s, we had some highway patrol cars here, the big Dodge 440s and all right. that. And those were just roll up windows, no air, shotgun. The, the 440 Magnums were the most missed patrol car from the people that drove them because they had power. Yeah, yeah. The problem with the air conditioning in these cars is they had a horsepower cutout. So if you had to go someplace really fast, right. they'd get up about 100 miles an hour, the air conditioner would cut out. Oh, then it would shut off the, okay. So you're in a closed up car, especially in summer in Bakersfield. And what's the fastest you ever did in one of these? The newer ones, when we got up to the fuel injection, I could bury the speedometer about at 160. Wow. Figuring out with the tack, I could get some up to 180. Really? Yeah. Well, I didn't think they would do that. That's they would. If you had enough open road. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's true. And that's And I grew up street racing in Detroit, so I had some advantage. Oh, is that right? Driving. Yeah. Oh, oh, good. There you go. We got to get more former street racers to be highway patrol. Because it, it helps. Yeah, it helps. yeah. Well, you get a lot of kids come up to you? Cause it seems like it'd be a fun career. It's very rewarding. Yeah. Some of your worst days are your most rewarding. Right. But I did it for 30 years, and I tell people if they have half the career they, that I had, they'll have a really good career. Now, what is most of the career? Is it traffic enforcement, traffic? I mean, you're not chasing bank robbers and things like that, are you, or is that part of it as well? Well, the Highway Patrol is actually the state police. Oh, okay. In 1995, we absorbed the state police, so we took all, over, all their duties. Okay. We are the governor's protection. We handle all state crimes. 
okay. on all state property. Plus, we're involved in a lot of different facets. Okay. Uh, I used to do drug interdiction. Uh, we have a task force now that handles retail crime. We have uh, cargo theft interdiction. So there's a lot of different facets that all comes under. We're ever expanding duties as a as a police department. And how many miles a year would you put? Would they put on these things? It depends where you worked. Yeah. Uh, I had a beat in Bakersfield. It took me 35 miles to get to the beat, and the right. beat was 77 miles long. Oh. So depending on how far you went, our guys in Barstow, they start their shift in Barstow, work their way to the county line, go over the county line, the whiskey pizza, whatever, have dinner, and come back. It was a full day. I'd have days when I'd put on 20, 30 miles, especially in a, in a heavier area and you have a lot of calls. Right. I'd have days when i put on three, 400 miles. Oh, okay. Now, do you get a lot of washouts, uh, the people that come? Because it's tough. I mean, you it's have very to be, tough. You have to you have a high standard. You have, a, 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 obviously, a mental test, and you have the physical things, too, as well. Uh, what, is, what is the rate? You know, I'm just curious. When I was coming in, well, yeah. my, my academy class was typical. We started 103 people and graduated 60. Wow. So it's about a 40% roughly yeah. dropout rate. Yeah, okay. It's, it's a lot of work to get in. You have to go through testing, background, history. Right. And it gets even a little harder nowadays because they can find more in you than they used to. And then with our academy, you actually live there. Oh, all right. You live at the academy. So we have a 400-plus comp acre complex in Sacramento, which is all-inclusive, our whole academy, and our motor transport where we will equip all the cars because the cars don't come factory equipped. Oh, is with, that right? With the lights, the siren, oh, yeah, all, you all the radio on. equipment okay. and that, we yeah. have a, a full-time yeah. automotive shop that does that. And where, how long do you live uh, at the academy? How long is the course? Right now, it's 27 weeks. Oh, okay. So you're there from Sunday night, midnight, you have to be in, and then you get out 5 o'clock Friday, depending on the mood of the staff. Oh, okay. And there's some classes that have to be done on weekends because okay. of time constraints. So like, it, it's hard on a person, it's hard on a family. I was married for a month before I went to the academy. And oh, okay. we just moved into a new apartment when we got married, and the neighbors didn't know me. They never see me. They just see her during the week. And really, right, I've right. got a husband. I really do. That's funny. Now, let me ask you, when I watch cop shows, why is there such antagonism to the other department? Oh, here comes the so-and-so. And they, don't, they never speak to each other. That's not, is that like that in real life? It seems like you, you're both it, on the same team, but they always do that. You own. are. It, it's... Some, sometimes there's reasons, sometimes there's, there's professional reasons, there's personal reasons. It's like sports teams. Right, right. Uh, it's like police and fire. But I, all the agencies I worked around, we were each other's backup. I worked a lot of rural areas and a lot of metropolitan areas. And the same thing. So there's problems. Sometimes it's more or less sometimes with the individuals than it is the department. And that's human nature. And did they, so they turned down about, what, 40% of the recruits? That's about what you'd say? That's does not make it through the academy. Right. Oh, I see. Okay. We have, for every 100 people that test, one person makes it through the academy. Really? Yes. Wow. They either, the, the hardest is the written test. Right. And they'll fail on that. So that washes out the majority of the people. Then as you go through the process, either something, something usually pops up. Could be physical. Right. Or it could be in your background. Right, right. I mean, and it's a, a long process. Yeah, you, you had a joint in your sock in 1992. Right. You're out. Yeah, one of it those. It could be. It, yeah. it's, it's lightened up a lot now. Yeah. At one time, if you had a DUI, it was a five-year waiting period. I don't know if that's still or not, that if you had one. Because people make mistakes when they're Right, younger. right, right. Felonies are an automatic no. And yeah. domestic, to violent, domestic violence things along that line are an automatic no that you're out because of laws. Because if you've ever been convicted of death, domestic violence, you're not allowed no to. Firearm. Right, right. So that's out of So you, uh, but you would recommend it as a career for you, uh, like young guys watching this, or young men and women watching it. Were there many women in your academy days? Yes. Oh, there were. Okay. Yes. So it's so that's pretty progressive. They were sort of a little bit ahead of the curve there with that, weren't they? They were. They had a program uh, that started several years, I think, in the '70s. It was called the We Top Women Traffic Officer Program. Right. That I still have friends that started in that. Yeah. That and they did their whole thirty. So it was. And it took a lot longer than that for them to finally get on motors. And they're on motors now, too. have been for quite some time. Well, very cool. So if you want to get one of these on your car, you see, just just uh, sign up and check it, it out. It, it's, to me, it was worth it. Yeah. Uh, it takes about a year to get on, depending on everything you have to go through. And what's the age? It's 21 to a... 21 to 35. 30, 35. And if you're in the military, we have a deferment program, because people like to put their time in the military to get a right. military pension and you can defer for up to eight years. Oh, so okay. as long as you're below 35 when you take the written test, right. and they'll do everything, they'll process you for everything, and when your time comes to retire, 
you can call the department and go active or you can just walk away it doesn't cost you a dime but it's great to have that waiting for you yeah I used to teach out at, I was for 15 years I was a law enforcement liaison for Vandenberg Air Force Base out of our Buellton office right and I used to do teaching out there uh, radar training traffic stop local laws because a lot of guys from out of state they would come up to me hey I'm getting out in in a, in a month or so are you guys hiring and they want a job now so that accelerates their pro cool well let's go over this car again now Let's see what we have here. We have, now these are illegal on civilian vehicles with a clear light, right? Yes. Like I, my, my Hudson Hornet over there has the inside lights you can, but I think they did away with that because it, I think it was creeping people out. Yeah. Or, they actually, yeah, you can still have the clear spotlights on the cars, but they have to be turned down when you're driving. Oh, okay. So but remember at one time taxi was using them and delivery services using the light up addresses. Right, right. So you've got these. So these, these take to the place of the, the lights on top. Light on top. So these are the ones flashing with the siren and the whole deal. Right. And of course you have the four, not even a five speed yet. No, the five speeds came, when I came on in 85, they had the five speeds. I don't see, a, is there a shotgun in here? There would have been. This is right here. The okay. empty rack right here is where the shotgun oh, would okay. oh, And I as see. time went on, it got partnered up with an AR-15, had both. Oh, okay. We carry both in the cars now. It almost looks like there's almost like you blow a hole in the roof trying to get it out of there. Uh, it's happened. Uh, it's happened? <laughs> Not with me, but with other officers. No, really, they just blow a hole in the roof. How do you explain that when you get back, uh, Sarge? Uh, yeah. It's all in the articulation. Huh? Yeah, oh, well, that's funny. And the, the officers that smoke cigars or cigarettes, because at, at one time you could smoke in the cars, right. uh, they proved to be ashtrays too. Wow. Now, also, I'm surprised you have this. This doesn't seem as rugged as a pure vinyl interior. This seems to have the the fabric, which is uh, kind of a deluxe option, I think, on the GL, wasn't it? I don't know if it was an option or not, but it was more breathable. And when you're sitting in a uniform, especially with a bulletproof vest on, which does not breathe, right. it made it more comfortable. And I think they actually got better wear out of these, because especially in the heat, if you've ever been in a car, you get in the car, it's been sitting out in the sun, you got leather or vinyl seats. Well, that's true. It's not desirable. How do you get somebody you've arrested in that back seat? Because all police cars now have the divider. Those are options. Most of our cars didn't have them. It was an option, and some departments have them, some don't. But it seems like people could kick out windows and do it, things like it, that. It depends on the area you work in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they take up space, but um, a single officer, you arrested somebody, one person, they were going in the right front seat. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Right. Uh, two officers, one in the back seat, and the, and the other, whoever you arrested, would be sitting next to them. Oh. And it's the seats fold forward, but first person I arrested was about 250 pounds and just devastated because he got arrested for drunk driving so I was very emotional upset and it was right. my first arrest and I was terrified and it was June in Bakersfield so and the air conditioner doesn't work much past the front seat yeah but yeah. It, it would get tight with people yeah but they fit wow okay what else we have well you got the lights in the back as well and the whip antenna modern police well I guess you still have it we have it on this one here don't you yeah and of course the highway patrol did you grow up watching Broderick Crawford on Highway Patrol? No. No, you see, you're, you're a little younger than me. Now, Not much. When the law is running, state or broken. Before spring into action, you dan, 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 I watch dan. it now. It's on me TV. I think I watch it. In, well, I'm watch close, because you'll see a very young Clint Eastwood. He's 19 years old, and he plays a punk. And he's, he's got a car, and he's driving. And the cops, he hates cops, and the cops are behind him, and the trunk opens and logs fall out, and you <laughs> see Roger Crawford <laughs> avoiding the logs, and Clint Eastwood's doing that. Oh, it's great. It's great. But to see a 19-year-old Clint Eastwood, it's really fantastic. It's really fantastic. Let's take a look in the trunk. Now, is this pretty much what you'd have back in the day? Back in the day, this is exactly it. Well, you got a lot of flares. I always use a lot of flares. Is that a fire extinguisher? Fire extinguisher, jumper cables. Now, why jumper cables? Do you, will, you, will you help motorists, or is that totally? It was for both. Sometimes our cars would be parked for a long time where they have to be shut off, and mm -hmm. you have your radio on, and that's a battery drain. So right. sometimes it was for jumping other officers' cars, right. and for people broken down as well. Okay, but is that, did the Highway Patrol do that, help people, or did they just pull over and they call AAA or something? Depending on circumstances. If yeah. you're out in a rural area where you're hours away from help, and if you knew the fact that they had no electrical problems, that they just wore their battery down by leaving lights on or something, you'd be more inclined just to jump them, get them on their way. Oh, okay. Get you on your way. Cool, cool. These are all period correct accessories. We got With the exception cleaner. of the paint. Yeah. We used to use lumber crayons. Oh, for okay. Marking evidence and stuff on the road. Yeah, yeah. First aid kit. First aid kit. I'm surprised the kit isn't bigger. Now it's a full EMT bag with oxygen. 
Oh, okay. So it's a duffel bag about yay big. It has oxygen and all kinds of splints and bandages and whatnot. But back then, here's a band-aid. That's all they had. Walk yeah, it here's off. A, here's a band-aid. Walk it off. Yeah. Well, it's fun to see it all outfitted. And what do we have here? Is this an this, electric? This is all the radio equipment. Oh, is that an inver- Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. The radio equipment and then the controls for some of the other equipment. Oh, and here we have a... Uh, an animal snare. Oh, okay. Is that a big problem also? It gets to be. It gets to be on different highways. Sometimes you'll have loose dogs getting out, or, or even if you have a dead animal, you don't want to be picking it up, so you just use a snare. But Right, okay. Cool. Uh, well, everything else is pretty much standard Mustang. Can we open the hood? Let's see what she looks like under the hood. What is it, right here? Should be on the left side. Now, when a highway patrol car breaks down and the hood's up, do people walk by, nah, nah, beep, beep, and beep the whole Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Especially when you're getting towed in. Oh, is that and right? And fellow officers are always very supportive of that. Too, oh, yeah, I can imagine. Radio. Okay, we got the bigger alternator than stock. Got your air conditioner here, power steering pump. Yeah, this is all pretty much standard stuff here, isn't it? Any other police? Maybe a tropical, they used to call it a tropical package with a bigger radiator. We had a bigger radiator. We had uh, all the hoses, the heater hoses, radiator hoses were silicone. Right. Because we, not unusual, spend hours on end idling somewhere. Now here you have a, a, a cold air intake that's supposed to fit right in there, which is quite, it gets so hot under here, what happens, the engine just stalls because it's sucking in hot air from, from the motor, so you're pulling at it from under here now. From under the, under by the, the wheel fender. wells, yeah. yeah, yeah. One trick we would do if we were stuck doing traffic control or whatever, we're, we weren't driving, but the car had to be running, is prop open the hood some and yeah. oh, make okay. a big just difference. Get some, some air in get there. Get some air in okay. there. Uh, what else? The standard tires, they look to be Goodrich radials, obviously. Our tires were rated for sustained high speed, and because of that, they couldn't be repaired, no matter how small the damage. Oh, is that right? It was a high speed warranty, so if yeah. you got a finishing nail on the tire, it was done. Wow, so you can't plug it, huh? Can't plug it. Okay. And in LA, we probably went through more tires because of going on shoulders and center dividers where all the traffic sweeps the normal debris of nails and glass and whatever right, else. Right, right. We usually replace more tires because of that than wearing them out. Do you get to take those tires home, fix no. them? Use? Nah, no. Okay. Contract with somebody to come get them. Oh, that's and too they bad. They could make out good because you have a brand new tire that yeah. patched and sold. And what was the shelf life of these? 150,000? I mean, were there so many miles before you turned them in, or was it just. Every two years, or every three years? No, year we what? went 75, it was either 75 or 80,000 miles. Okay. And then as time went on, they went up to 100,000 miles. Okay. And then they would auction them off. We have two places in California that they auction the cars off. One down here in South LA and one up in Sacramento. Now, I thought they'd be a much bigger than stock uh, battery, but apparently not, because these spend all day idling and they're they're always running. running all the time. I thought it'd be some oversized or even a, a second battery, but no, apparently that's The enough, newer huh? cars do. Huh? With, yeah. with the com- a lot more computerized stuff in that, they have two batteries. So but this, these are just the one. This leaves Ford as what I think is the Mustang GL, if I'm not mistaken. I Pretty think much so. just V8 with a stick. Right. Did they do any automatics or was it always a stick? For us, it was only sticks, but there's other agencies that had automatic, some agencies had light bars, some agencies had push bumpers in the front. But we just. Because it seems like a lot speed. of officers wouldn't like a stick just because you're constantly shifting all the time. It, it could be a problem, especially talking there. There's advantages of it. Uh, if you're in a pursuit and the person was going to jump out of the car real quick, you could just put the car in neutral, pull the emergency brake, and get out of the car. You don't have to worry about stopping, put right. it in park, and, yeah, and that yeah. would come in handy. Yeah. Plus, you had more control over your whole range, driving right, in different right. weather and whatnot. Yeah. And, and back in the day, a four speed got better mileage than a three speed automatic and yeah. a few other things like that. Okay, here, let's put this hood down again. There we go. gotten as high as 25 miles, 25, 27 miles to gallon, as low as four on the Mustang. Really? Now these run on premium fuel or regular fuel? Just regular. They do? Yeah, I guess that's the that's, that's that's government thing, isn't it? You can't run it. So what, what was the horsepower the first year for these? The original with these carburetor models was 157 horsepower. Right. As time went on, we went to fuel injected models, they went up to two, 225. 225, okay. I asked you before about the um, the female officer. Has there been a female commissioner? We have our first current female commissioner. She was appointed when our former commissioner retired in 2020. Okay. So she's been about two years. 
And I imagine to be commissioner, you have to come up through the ranks. Isn't that correct? Can you? It's can not you... required. Oh, it's not. But okay. it's it's tradition. I've never known of anybody not being coming up through the ranks. Right, right. But I suppose you could come from LAPD or something. You else. could. You serve at the pleasure of the governor. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that could be tricky. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, let me tell you about this one over here. This is this we did as kind of an homage. You know, every year at SEMA we do a project with Ford, and we thought this would be. I had the General's car care booth, so. We had our products, we figured let's detail this using all our products and uh, show people what it can do. And Galp and Ford, their Autosports division, they dressed this up for us. We got permission to use the decal and all this on here just so I'm not gonna be driving around pulling people over, don't worry about that. Do you ever catch any fake cops, by the way? Yes. Uh, and there's a lot of guys that do that, isn't it? There I'm, is. I'm there stunned is. at how many people put a blue light in their car and pretend to be a, I have a friend of mine, uh, Sheriff Bouchard in Michigan. He saw a guy one day, and he goes, who are you? And then he goes, I'm a police officer. He goes, yeah, yeah, well, I'm the sheriff. And what? And then he arrested the guy and took him away. I, I, and that's fairly common, huh? It happens. I don't know if it's common, yeah. but unfortunately, there's marked police cars out there, there's unmarked police cars out there. Right. And so if you pick up a light, right. it, you know, it, it's possible to happen. And what is the penalty for impersonating a police officer. It's got to be pretty serious, isn't it? It's a misdemeanor penalty, so I think it can be up to a year in jail. Oh, well, okay. All there right. could be other charges that go with it. Anyway, but this, we thought if they were ever going to do it again, this would be a cool one to do. Absolutely. Then you get some real horsepower, like around 500 or so, and six speed and the whole deal, so very cool. Well, come on, let's take this for a ride and see what you'll do. some Porsches. <laughs> it's so funny when I watch police shows now like Chicago PD you know they've always got Hellcats and yeah. uh, Durango's all tricked out with trick wheels and big time just makes me it just makes me laugh you know, originally, when we went, when Ford went to the alloy wheels on the Mustangs, yeah, they were the bright finish, and we had them powder coated because we were afraid the department was afraid of the public image of having cars with such fancy looking wheels. All oh, right, so yeah, they yeah. powder coated them black, and then over time it didn't wasn't an issue, but initially that was their concern. That's funny, but it seems like a fun career. Do you miss it? I miss parts of it. Yeah, there are certain things that I look back that I really had a good time doing. Don't miss the endless hours of boredom or of stuck at traffic control or many other things. I mean, is it like every other job now in the sense that there's just so much paperwork and so it's more than in your day or is it that pretty much the same? No, the paperwork's ever increasing. There's yeah. there's more stat keeping and more tracking of different things and different programs, and so it's it's always getting to be a lot more. Did you consider other branches of law enforcement, LAPD or private or sheriff? Or why uh, were you a car guy? Why did you pick highway patrol? Well, I grew up in Detroit. I grew up street racing in Detroit. Oh, okay. The, the what were you racing? From Detroit. I had a '65 Ford Galaxy with the 390 in it. Oh, right my nice. first car, yeah. and that turned into a 406 punched out to 427, 375 horse. Wow! Did, did was, you have the triple carburetor set up? No, just one carburetor. Okay. And. Um, that got me in some notice street racing. And then after that, I ended up with a, believe it or not, a, a three-speed Mustang, 302. Oh, that's funny. And that was a lot of fun. Had a 299 uh, first gear in it. We just off the line was great. But I moved out here. Uh, I always enjoyed driving, enjoyed driving car, uh, working on cars and whatnot. But one of the biggest advantages of the higher patrol is you can live anywhere in the state. Your first year out of the academy, wherever your assignment is, it is. Right. And then it's seniority based after that pretty much so. Uh, my first two years was in Bakersfield, three years Santa Fe Springs, uh, 22 years between Buellton and Santa Barbara. Then my last two years were down here in Westminster. My wife had to come down to take care of her family. Oh, okay. So wherever your sonority will take you, so wherever you want to live in the state, you can live in the big city, you can live up in the mountains. Oh, okay, that's interesting. And then we have what's known as resident posts where you're so remote, you actually work out of your house. Wow. In small towns, kind of like Mayberry. Yeah, yeah. You handle your calls and handle the rural stuff.
I did. I was on our uh, protective services. We have what's called protective services detail. Yeah. So we protect the dignitaries that are in town. It says ad needs basis. And one year, when George Bush the first was president, they were low on motors. You know how we shut down the freeway, right. we're going down the freeway. So they said, okay, you know, the guys on the team, who do you know how to drive Mustangs? So those of us that regularly drove, regularly drove Mustangs, we filled in for the motors on the freeway. That was a blast. Oh, that was cool. And, and yeah, the whole open freeway. George Bush commented later, he said, he was really impressed with seeing being passed by Mustangs for a change instead of motors. He was a nice man. Yeah. I had dinner with him a number of times, and I got to be pretty good friends with the family. You know, he was a he was a class act. Yeah, yeah, he, I liked him. You know, he I think he, he was the youngest flyer in World War II. Mm -hmm. uh, got shot down. You know. Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen the video, yeah. the archive video. Yeah. Of it. He was still jumping out of airplanes when he's in his 80s. Yeah. That's you know? how I met my wife. Oh, jumping out of airplanes? <laughs> broke my ankle skydiving. Yeah. And uh, walked on it for a couple days because I knew it wasn't broke. Then when I had to have surgery, she was an orthopedic nursing student. She oh. was a nursing student during orthopedic rotation. Oh. Come December 1st, it'll be 37 years we've been married. Wow. Yeah, I've been married 41, so. Great. That support means all the difference in the world. Yeah. And I have the distinction for 30 years calling my wife and go, honey, I'm not going to be home on time because I'm in jail. Okay, yeah. bye. Yeah. She didn't care, but she never offered bail either. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Does Highway Patrol have any jurisdiction not on the highway? Yes. So is it any 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 road in California? Well, we have jurisdiction on all the freeways, but also we handle all the unincorporated areas of the state of all the counties. So you would have jurisdiction on this? If this is unincorporated, yes. So it's not a corporated city. Oh, but I we see. have authority statewide. Oh, okay. So you can All police you can here. stop anybody anywhere. You can't. I mean, correct. If you're not a place you're not supposed to be, you can still give a ticket. Correct. Right? Yeah. And any police agency in the state has the same authority. It's just who handles whose jurisdiction. You know, it's amazing how far cars have come in 40 years. Because this thing is really slow. It does. I mean, and clunky. To think that this is oh, catching Porsches and this is the high-speed vehicle. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Says, what is your assessment? Is it crazier now than when you started? About the same? It, it's crazier now. Social media influences life so much. Yeah, yeah. Everything you do now is instant. Instantly yeah. out there for the good or bad, right or wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the courts have taken on different views. And the media takes on different views, so it makes it harder to do your job. You're, you're more of a, you come under the first impression Right or wrong isn't the point, it's the first impression. Right, so right, yeah. You have a lot more to deal with. A lot more negativity as a whole in, in the police departments right now yeah, with what's yeah. been going on in the country. I know, I know. And it's a broad brush. I mean, overall, it seems like things are getting better, but sp media wise, it seems like they're getting worse. Well, you know, I mean, I see people. Sensationalism, controversy yeah, sells. Yeah, yeah. People seem to get along pretty good. You know, stuff that used to be is now against the law, used to be the law. Right. And, and, you know, and that's good. Just about any cop will tell you, way too many laws on the books. Yeah. Because there's always laws that people want to improve or change, and they're basically the same thing. Plus, now, as a police officer, you have to be a therapist. You've got to be a doctor. You, oh, absolutely. You, you've got to be all these things. Yeah, social worker or family yeah, counselor. Yeah, yeah. One of the things that made this job so much easier for me is my, when I turned 16 for nine years through the rest of high school, college, and a little bit beyond, I worked in the grocery business in a grocery store. Yeah. So dealing with the public made this job so much easier because I had a good in. Yeah, yeah. Not only that, I didn't have to worry about, in this job, return sales like you do in, in the retail business. Yeah, right, 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 yeah. But it is like, like any job, it's, if it's what you want to do, yeah. It's a great yeah. job. It comes with a lot of tragedy and a lot of travesty. Anybody else in your family in law enforcement? Is that your kids? I mean, my my oldest father? son. I mean, no, my uh, a father, uh, uncle, that kind of deal? Nope, just my oldest son is he's on the higher patrol. Right, right. And he's got 16 years. He he works uh, out of our Southern LA office. Uh, attached to our auto theft unit, but he's also attached to the U.S. Marshals Fugitive Task Force. Oh, you told me that. And yeah, they, yeah. they chase the worst of the worst all over the country. You got grandkids too? You got two grandkids. Oh, they. How old are they? 
Uh, grandkids are seven and four. Do they want to be police officers? Uh, I think my grandson does. He's yeah. very, you know, daddy gets to bring him, daddy drives on a car for a car home, so he brings it home. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so they know all the bells and the lights and whistles and everything. They also know why daddy has Gatorade bottles in the car all the time. Has what? Gatorade bottles. Oh, that's funny. You can do a lot of surveillance, what he does. Yeah, that's funny. Well, it is amazing how unremarkable this car is. It is. Because when it came out in the day, oh, it's got the cop engine, it's got the cop thing, you know. It's a high performance, but it's really not. Just a two barrel Mustang. It was. With a four speed. It was. Uh, we'd have people that, boy, if you weren't driving that, especially motorcycles, I would have never stopped. But yeah. back when these cars came out, speedometers in regular cars, because of emissions limits, were, the speedometer only up to 85 miles an hour. Right. Well, that, that was Jimmy Carter and the, yeah. the thinking being, well, nobody would go faster than that, which is so stupid. Oh, no. We, we'd get those people regularly at 100 miles an hour. Yeah. yeah. You know, in the open rural areas, and I 5 up through Kern County, San Joaquin Valley. What's the fast you ever recorded anybody? Fastest I ever recorded somebody is I had a pursuit at 125 miles an hour. Oh, okay. Our, when we went to the fuel injected Mustangs, they would get up. We, I could bury the needle in a long stretch at yeah. 160. Yeah. But uh, with the five speeds, at about 2,000 RPM, you're doing 70 miles an hour. Yeah. <laughs> Earlier Mustangs had a rev limiter. Yeah, oh yeah. So if, if, if you rode out, a, ran the uh, gear out too far, then that rev, rev limiter would kick in, but it then would kick out. So you had the worst case of misfire going yeah. on until you could get up to speed or down the speed. Well, it kind of feels a little fast, but not really. For its day, yeah. it was definitely its day. Did you have a favorite? Car, patrol car when you were an officer? Was it the Mustang? It was, was it, the Mustang. Yeah, yeah. You, you liked this more than the Crown Vic? I did. It, it was so much more versatile. You could you could get places quicker. Uh, one advantage with the stick shift is car, the older cars had rear drums, rear drum brakes. Right. So you had to worry about brake fade. So with the five speed, you could easily not even use the brakes half as much. Yeah. And have so much more tremendous control over the car. Well, this one doesn't have the lower, like the Camaro has a kind of a chin spoiler in the front right? that would hit. This, I think, you could probably do a little bit better. Yeah, a little we, more ground clearance. I we mean. tested the Camaros. Yeah. And that was one of the problems is the lower ground clearance. And they had the bigger, heavier doors, too, which was a problem. The problem we had with these cars on the side of the freeway is because the doors are bigger than your standard sedan, is if you didn't hold on to that door as you're opening it, getting either in and out of the car, a truck would go by and it yeah. would take that door and pop those hinges. Wow. It, it'd bend it all the way back so it was back in the shop to get some new hinges put on. But nice thing about Crown Vicks, you just fix them with a hammer. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, they, they were workhorses. And uh, I think we went up to 125,000 before I left when they were getting rid of them. They started going to the, the expeditions. Right. And now the chargers. But most of your taxi cabs are ex cop cars. Yeah. Because they, they sell them at auction and they're, they're still workhorses. Boy, it's blow a lot of dirt out of this thing. It's yeah. amazing. This thing's got some rough miles on it. Yeah, yeah. I was looking at Scott, I think it's got over 100, so it might be the original. Yeah. Never reworked, just cleaned up. So do you, do you do security work now at all? Is that something that you do? No, I'm a house husband. Yeah. But where I go to church, I'm part of their security team because uh, times have changed where yeah, churches yeah. aren't the sanctuaries they used to be. Wow. So I just volunteer for that. And my wife and I like to travel. Me, I just want to stay home. My wife I, likes I'd like to stay home. I like, I, like, I like exploring, especially the first time I, I left Michigan, except for I lived across the river from Canada, so I used to go take my grandfather fishing in Canada all the time. The first time I really left Michigan was my high school senior trip was to Hawaii. Oh, is that right? And yeah. We, we stopped over in California and kind of fell in love. It always had its own mystique anyway. Still got family in, film in Michigan? TV. I still have family in Michigan. I try and make it back once a year. Well, maybe we'll get a couple of people to sign up after watching this. We'll see what happens. I strongly encourage it. It doesn't cost you anything to go through the testing. Yeah. You can walk at any time. And the fact that not everybody makes it pretty exclusive. It, it is. It is. And times and, and things are always changing, but so do people. So. 
if you roll with it, it's something you want to do, I highly recommend it. Oh, Big yeah, advantages I think it's great. To, especially being great. able to live anywhere in the state. Well, Rich, thank you very much, my thank friend. You. And all, all the highway patrol officers. Thanks, sir. And thanks for pulling me over that time. Yeah. <laughs> See you guys next week. Did you ever take care of that ticket? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs>